This is our next project. It's a kitchen table and it's countertop height, so it's a little taller than most that you would see. And I apologize for not being able to get a better shot of it, but in my shop, this is kind of the best I can do right now. But it's 40 inches wide, 72 inches long, and then countertop height, which in this case is 37 inches tall. Most countertops are 36 inches tall. There'll be uh, plans to it on the website in case uh, you're interested in that. There'll be a, dis uh, a link to it in the description. But this is made from oak that from my property that I cut on my sawmill. During this video, we talk about filling knots with epoxy. Uh, I used a Waterlux uh, finish on it, which I've never used before, but I'm really happy with it. Um, I'll talk briefly about that. All right, let's get started. So my tabletop's going to be um, six feet long. So I'm taking my boards and I'm cutting out some of the worst places. Like this is a big old hole right here. Um, so I'll trim that back to here, and then I'm going to cut them all about two inches longer than what I need. Um, and that's really the first step you want to do is get them cut to a little bit oversized lengthwise and then it gives you manageable pieces to start joining and all that. None of this is jointed on the ends but leaving two inches it gives you enough length to fix that later. So now that I've got the um, pieces cut to length I'm going to get them run through the joiner and my joiners uh, I think it's three feet long or something like that. It's kind of short uh, for doing six foot long boards. So uh, what I've done is I've set up a roller out here to help support it. And the way you want to set that is um, when you get it started, you, you'll see me here doing the same, but you run it across and you're going to have pretty good accuracy um, until you get a little, you know, you start getting past halfway when it starts kind of trying to lean. So before you get to that point, you want to bring this over, unlock it, and pull it up until it's touching, but not, not lifting it, but touching it, and then lock it down, and that gives you where it's perfectly set. And then don't move it, because your floor may not be um, exactly right after that. So anyway, I'm going to start getting these run through the joiner. <laughs> join it on one side and so now what I'm going to do is run it through the table saw and I'll get the edges parallel and cut out uh, the parts that I don't want and so that edge didn't have to be perfect but what you're going to do is run it through until you get one you get one nice straight uh, edge on one side and it, um, as you go through you can hear it as it's skipping parts and you just kind of keep going until uh, you get it to where uh, you hear it cutting all the way through. Now when you go to join it for the actual joints that you're going to glue, you're going to inspect them each time you pass through to make sure um, that you're getting a really good joint. So I'm getting ready to rip my boards and I want to make sure that my blade is exactly at 90 degrees to the table. You can do that with a square or uh, lots of different ways to do it. Uh, to me the easiest way and a really accurate way is you can get these uh, wixy digital angle guide. Um, I've had this for quite a while and really like it. Um, what you do is, is you, let, me, let me bring you in here where you can actually see that. I don't know if that's showing up or not. Yeah, it is. It's just a little dark. Okay, so uh, I'm going to zero it. And so that's got us to zero. And then all I do is I take it and put it on my saw. I'm going to tip it at a little bit of an angle so that you can see it a little bit better. Okay, and then that's where my stop is on my saw. And now if I just turn my adjustment here, there we go. That's got us right on. Okay. 
So you can see, well, <laughs> me pushing on it gets it just a little bit. You can see how accurate the thing is. There you go. All right, so that is right on 90, and it'll give a really good cut. I'll put that down in the comments uh, in case you're interested in one. I'll see if I can find it. So as I'm getting straight edges on these boards, I'm going to be cutting out parts of the board that I don't want. Of course, you know, I don't want this big crack in there. I am leaving the knots and that kind of stuff. I want kind of a rustic look on this, but uh, I am going to cut this off. And then the rest of them, I'll pretty much just give myself, uh, put that jointed edge against the fence and then give myself a straight edge over here that I can run through the joiner also. tabletop and I've gotten all of my boards there's five of them total plain to the same thickness and I've jointed the edges and so the next thing I've got to do I've got them kind of roughly cut to length um, I'll after I get it glued up I'll cut the ends off but um, the next thing I've got to do is I'm going to join it together with some biscuits okay so I've got my biscuit cutter and some some biscuits here. I'm using number 10 and I've marked every foot a line straight across here So the next thing I've got to do is just take this and cut in my pockets um, to put the biscuits in So I've got some brown paper down to because I'm going to have a bunch of glue probably drip down. And I've laid out some calls. Uh, I believe they're called calls. C-A-U-L-S. And these are some I made years ago. Um, I just glued two pieces of oak together and then ran it through the joiner to get it really flat on one side. And then put a piece of packing tape on there so glue wouldn't stick to it. And you lay these on there and then back here is the other half and you put that on top like that and then um, you can clamp these down and this will make your table flat and then you do clamps this way uh, to pull pull in the sides and get out your gaps in between and all that so you get a flat table that's you know compressed well together with that system all right I'm gonna get started all right so I got the calls laid out and I got two of my pipe clamps laid out
Okay, that's got it all glued up. Now I've just got to wait. I'll probably let it sit here for 24 hours or something uh, before I unclamp it. And then our top will be uh, glued together. All the clamps are off. And right now, what I'm doing right now is I have filled all the knots uh, with some clear epoxy. I used uh, this stuff right here, this Famwood uh, Glaze Coat Clear Epoxy um, to fill them with. And what I'm doing now is getting them the uh, <coughs> sanded nice and flat. Now um, I'll do a separate video on how to f you fill these because I don't, you know, that's that's not specifically what this video is about. So <coughs> you'll see that. But what I want, one thing I wanted to point out was once you fill them with the epoxy, um, I've come over. Some some of them were sticking up pretty good, and I've come over with a router and kind of knocked the tops off. Uh, but there's lots of ways of flattening them out. You can use uh, sandpaper on a block. Uh, one of the fastest, though, is this is an old tool of my grandfather's. It's uh, used for flattening uh, body filler on a uh, on a car, and it actually works really well. You just have to be really careful that you keep it flat. You just run it over the top like that until um, you get it, and it'll get it nice and flat, and then you can come back and just hit it a couple of times. Not necessary. It just makes it a little bit faster. I've got the table flipped upside down, and I'm going to cut it off with my circular saw, and that way... If I have any tear out, it'll be on the underneath side. And I've just got a straight edge set up with a setback far enough for my blade. And I'm just going to get this cut off. Alright, so I'm getting ready to round over the corners on the table. I want it to be kind of a, you know, friendly, uh, comfortable looking table. So I'm going to round these corners off. And so I've cut, uh, this is a two inch radius curve here, and I'm just going to use a router to knock this off. Uh, you could use a jigsaw. The problem is, is these, the blade is so long. I cut the, I cut the first one that way, and what happens is, is it, you know, it can bend out or it can bend in, which would be even worse. So this way you're kind of assured that you're going to get a straight up and down corner. Now my bit's not long enough because this stock is an inch and a quarter thick. So I'll just use this as a guide now to get the bottom part. And so that leaves a little bit of a ridge there, but that'll sand out. I'm getting ready to put a finish on the top of the table and I'm using this Waterlux original and it's going to give it kind of a satin sheen. It's a tongue oil based um, finish and anyway uh, you just wipe it on or you can brush it on. I've already done the underside and so um, I'm getting ready to put it on the top. I'm just using a piece of clean gauze to put it on with. 